In part one, we mentioned the Keyline Plow developed by PA Yeomans and sold to this day by the Yeomans Plow Company. We'll now listen to Darren Doherty discussing the choice to use a Keyline Plow for broad scale water absorption versus using an on contour swale as the main technique for water absorption. What I did was, um, because it was a pretty lively conversation, as you'd imagine. Um, and because uh, there's a lot of people who are pretty annoyed at the, uh, the swale centricity of permaculture these days about, you know, that, um, and I just find it really, I, and I don't have a problem with swales used in the right context, um, but what I do have a problem is with people just cut, using carte blanche solutions, and that includes key line ploughing, right, and other techniques. Um, you've got to be very specific, right? So anyway, what I what I tried to rationalise was how much water do these structures actually collect in a rainfall event? So what I did was I drew a hectare on graph paper and I worked out, well, if I'm using my keyline plough, the shanks on the keyline plough are a metre apart on my plough, right? And I'll rip, say, to about 12 inches of depth. Okay, so I've got a, in one hectare, I've got a hundred rip lines going across, right? Because there's one every metre, a hectare is a hundred by a hundred. What it looks like on the surface, or in a, sorry, in a cross section, is that is basically what key line ploughing looks like in a cross section, with a metre between each rip, right? So that sort of triangular zone there, if the foot of the plough is here, it's actually lifting, it goes through and it, and it breaks the compaction in a V out like that. So the foot of the plough is here, it's releasing the compaction here, and this, is, this stays as it was, okay? At that spacing. If you bring the shanks closer, well then um, the whole lot is disturbed and loose. Now, I've I because it was difficult and I didn't go, I was doing this on paper, I estimated that I got a 50% um, change in bulk density. Bulk density is the basically a volumetric measurement of the density of soil. Right? So it's a weight per volume. So if I release all of this compaction in a soil, there's now a lot more airspace. And airspace equals water space. Right? So I basically I said, look, I've got about I've got about 50% increased bulk density. So that's all of this airspace per volume. So what I calculated was the volume of that section per meter of length. Right? So I was able to calculate a square meterage of increased of, of water catchment, right? Now what I worked out ultimately that that across a hectare per, I was able to take within that 12 inch deep or 30 centimetre deep um, zone <clears throat> um, 37.5 millimetres of rain which is nearly an inch and a half in one, in one event. Right? Now that's not accounting for transpiration, um, extra seepage that's going to occur, um, the fact that I'm using a, a key line pattern which is ultimately moving water. It was just the pure amount of volume that is there in between all of the new aggregates that I've created. Okay? So I did that. Now I looked at and I priced that out per square metre. And I priced that at uh, about $100 an hour, right? And it worked out at $0.05 cents a square metre, right, was the price. I've got the full article there that I wrote. Anyway, now the other thing I did was I went to swales as an alternative structure. And so I put five swales... So swales at conventionally sized swales, um, and I put five of them, each of them at 20 metres of spacing, right? Just as a starting point. I worked out that the swales were, um, you know, normal size swale for, that a lot of people out there are building, something like about two metres across, or one and a half metres across, and another one and a half metres across thereabouts, right? And X amount of height. And then I did the same thing. 
worked out that the swale embankment has a low bulk density because it's obviously fluffed up and not compacted. And then you've also got a water storage in here because water is coming in behind here in the cut. And that cut, typically most people are not ripping. So it's, you know, people are using an excavator or a grader or a bulldozer or a shovel. And then that is not a porous system there. That's actually a compacted system. This is where the uncompaction is, which is in the embankment itself. So I worked that out. I worked out the, the total volume of airspace there for water space, and it was about double what the key line was if I put five of them in. But the cost per hectare to do that was $1,500 per hectare to install that, and it worked out at about 75 cents per square metre to build swales. Right? That's at $2,000 um, per cubic metre, $2 a metre to move dirt, right? I don't know what it costs here, but that, you know, if you're paying 180 bucks, 150 bucks for an earth mover per hour for this conventional equipment, that's what it's going to cost you, about $2 a cubic metre. So I worked out that. Then I brought it down. I, I thought, well, look, that's, to be fair, I need to get the swale down to the equivalent amount here. Now the swale court, I'd have to look at the article, which I can do quickly. So, so the, um, so the, the key line by cultivation cost was, oh sorry, it was two cents per square metre, not five cents per square metre. 